Everybody's heard of the Impossible Burger, the Beyond Burger. So this is some of the newer products that have emerged in the last five, six years or so. And these are proteins that are made with plants. Pretty simple, plant-based meats, right? Um, obviously, all of you will know that meat alternatives have actually had a place in, in culinary history for hundreds and thousands of years. Um, tofu, tempeh, there's so many different ways that we've been consuming meat alternatives. But for the purpose of today's conversation, we'll be talking about this new generation of so-called plant-based or vegan meats. So that is mycelium protein. Mycelium is the root structure underneath a mushroom. That product right there is from the roots underneath a mushroom. The fungi kingdom has massive, massive opportunity when it comes to changing the food system. If you can believe it, we have only mapped 5% of the entire fungi kingdom. Just think about that for a second. 95% of the fungi kingdom is still out there for us to uncover. So in terms of innovation opportunity, absolutely huge. And as you can see, it looks like a tasty chunk of meat, but that's, that's not actually meat. The next one is fermentation. So we're going to be talking about precision fermentation. Precision fermentation is very similar to traditional fermentation, beer, wine, kombucha, kimchi, all of it, right? But what's different about precision fermentation is that we can actually tell those microorganisms, instead of turning into this type of product, we can actually make you turn into this type. So in this case, we can actually program microorganisms to turn themselves into proteins. What does that mean? That means that we can create real dairy protein, like the picture here, without a cow. So things like whey protein, I'm sure each of you is very familiar with whey protein. Certainly if anybody in here is a gym buff, everybody knows you consume a lot of whey protein. Uh, but that's just one of the proteins we've discovered so far. A really exciting one still to come, casein. Casein protein is the key ingredient in cheese. It's what makes it go ooey gooey. That's the casein. And that's why plant-based cheeses don't have that ooey gooeyness. But this technology right here has the ability to un unlock that without the use of a cow. The last one, uh, cultivated right here, is the holy grail. Cultivated meat, cell-based meat, cultured meat, lab-grown meat. It's got a lot of names. This is real, 100% meat grown using the cells of an animal. This does not require anything to be grown, slaughtered. We don't need the rest of the animal. We just take these cells and replicate them and grow them into the entire cut of meat without all the rest of it. And this is one of the most promising technologies that if we get this right, we could save the planet. So now, that is our first lesson on what the future of food means. Pretty incredible stuff. This isn't a sci-fi novel. This is real. And I've tasted every single one of these products. I've tasted seven different companies' lab-grown meat. I've tasted lab-grown salmon. I've had pork. I've had beef. I've had chicken. It's real. I'm living proof. 29% of all global emissions are created by animal agriculture. That's on the high end. We are facing an unprecedented uh, crisis when it comes to drought, when it comes to water shortage, when it comes to these crazy weather episodes, flooding here, floods here. I got no water in California. You know, it's becoming increasingly erratic. 45% of all global crops are grown for animal feed. Now that we're facing those droughts, there's a tremendous stress that's being put on the food system and how we use the grains that are grown. Uh, in particular, we're in a war right now. The geopolitical instability that's going on uh, with Ukraine uh, and with Russia is going to have very, very serious repercussions on how we are able to grow meat. That's the simple fact. It is going to become extremely expensive for us to continue to produce the crops for animal feed. As you can see, 2019 to 2020, look at that. Look at that growth. Where do you see growth like that? That's hockey stick growth right there. And that's because food is suddenly becoming 
one of the most important areas for us to invest in. So we've raised 11 billion in about six years or so. But here's the thing. The meat industry is worth 1 trillion. 1 trillion is 1%. We have a long, long way to go. I'm going to take you through three different areas that I want you to pay attention to. The first one is the future of seafood. Seafood is one of the largest untapped markets when it comes to the food system. We put a lot of money in meat, but not a lot in seafood. Sandia is creating shrimp. Her shrimp is made without the use of shrimp, and she can produce faster, more environmentally sustainable than growing shrimp in farms. Two-thirds of all seafood that's consumed in Asia is shrimp. Carrie Chan, Avant Meats. Carrie Chan is focusing on very unique Asian delicacies, including sea cucumbers and other things like that. But here's another one that you'll get a kick out of, especially the women in the room. Carrie's focused on cell-based snail cream. Real snail cream made without the use of a snail. Amazing. This is what's so unique. Kimberly Lee, Prime Roots. She's using ancient Chinese proteins uh, that have been completely untapped in the United States market to make realistic meat. The future of infant nutrition. Michelle Egger, Biomilk. She is creating cell-based breast milk, just like mom, except for this will be sold at a store instead of dairy infant formula. Fengru Lin, Turtle Tree Labs. Same thing. Fengru is focusing on recreating dairy, except for creating it with human components instead. Instead of us consuming from a cow, what if we consumed milk that was made for a human? There's over 2,000 ingredients in milk. 2,000. She's recreating them. Laura Katz, Helena, infant formula as well, using that precision fermentation I told you about earlier today. The last area, a little bit funky, pet food. If you added up all of the dogs and cats in the United States, it would be the fifth largest meat consuming country in the world. Our dogs and cats eat a lot of meat and they have a big environmental footprint. Dr. Pernilla Audibor, Abril Estrada, Dr. Shannon Falconer, every single one of these women is creating cell-based pet food. Dr. Shannon actually uh, last year in Vegas debuted cell-based mice meat cat treats. First time in the world. That's three areas that you've probably not heard about. But those three areas are going to be worth billions and billions of dollars. 